All right, guys, there we go. We've got the struts. I want to give a big shout out to Samantha, Amanda, not Samantha, Amanda at UPS at the warehouse. People aren't supposed to be able to go to the warehouse to grab their stuff, but I might have made a biz big enough fuss just through me and then Nolan at LST as well, who's my gas strut uh, provider. Um, I, there was no way I was gonna let them put that back on a truck and attempt to deliver it down the block from them or to me. Welcome to Blind Man Outdoors. I'm Dave, and I've been exploring my whole life, from my hometown in the Blind Man River Valley to the jungles of South America. Four years ago, I left an old life behind to chase a passion full time. Now, I built Canada's Yucapac Camper and the Alberta Outdoor Adventure Expo, all while continuing to explore and experience the great outdoors. You see, I believe we're called to live free and be wild. And if you do too, then this is the place for you. It's deadline day, and we did meet the deadline. Granted, I made it by the skin of my chinny chin chin, or the, the hairs on my skinny chin, whatever the fuck, it, whatever the fuck, you know what I'm saying. You know what I'm saying. We did the thing. So now, we're gonna install this thing in about 20 minutes. Let's put on our work clothes. guys think so far you like the way it looks? I love it. I love it. It's good. He's crazy and straight. <laughs> we should have gone with red. Yes! <laughs> I agree. Well, Sarah, what do you think? Looks great. Looks great, eh? Good work. Thank you. Oh yeah, that looks sharp. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Cam. Love it. Is that rusty olive approved? Just gotta put some rust on her now. That a boy. <laughs> All right, let's open her up. So yeah, you'll have uh, four bug nets. Um, they they strap down using those bungees. There's a bungee that's in there, oh, yeah. and that loops. So you can basically pull one end to tighten it, and you can tighten up the door or the bug net. You can have them both tied off and open. You can have one tied off and not open. Yeah. And then again, when you're closing it, just make sure you've got half the doors open yeah. so that the, the air can escape because this is almost an airtight um an airtight spot up here I feel it as soon as i close this yeah i don't think we'll have to worry about stops. being cold okay. yeah. no especially now with the insulation kit yeah. that's up that's up here that's perfect. yeah
Sexy. Yeah? yeah. You're happy with it? Yeah. Very. Very. Good. We can't wait to put scratches in it. Yeah. <laughs> you guys would recommend a Yuka Pack camper to everybody else? Yeah. Well, then if everybody else has one, then I won't have one, a unique one. You, you will always have the unique one. <laughs> you have number, number one, one of the full pop. Number We're number one. <laughs> Love it. No, awesome, guys. Well, I appreciate you guys. Drive safe, and we'll see you guys on the flip side. You Thank bet. You. Take care, Dave. All right, guys. Well, you heard it from themselves. Uh, there's nothing that makes me feel better after, you know, encountering challenge after challenge after challenge than listening to the customers just say, man, we just love this thing. So they're going to be feeding us with a whole bunch of awesome information and uh, just ways that we can improve and make things better, et cetera, et cetera. So very, very excited to have them out there with that. And very excited to also say that we have sold a whole whack more campers since that video has actually been made. So shout out to everybody who's purchased a camper this fall. We are hosting a, uh, a fall promotion right now. So anybody that wants a Yuka Pack camper that's on the fence um, and unsure about whether they want a full pop or a wedge, um, if you want a wedge top, we're going to give you guys a free roof rock. It's like 800 bucks worth. And if you want the full pop, it's normally going to be a $500 price increase over the normal Yuka Pack Sport um, for the Yuka Pack Safari, which is what we're going to call it. We will upgrade you to the Yuka Pack Safari for free on us. Um, and it will be incredible if you guys wanted to jump on that. So head on over to www.blindmanoverland.com if you want to learn more. The Yuka Pack Safari is up there right now, and uh, it's getting a lot of buzz. People really, really like that camper. We have a trip planned right now. We actually have to leave first thing in the morning, and it's going to solve a lot of the problems that you would have seen on this previous video. Um, Yuka Pack Campers has partnered with a manufacturer here in Canada, so the Yuka Pack Camper can still be made in Canada, but we are going to be making it through a much grander process um, and uh, we're super, super stoked. But what we have to do is we have to go there. We have to meet with the team that's going to be taking on our manufacturing. And uh, they are in the game already. They manufacture a very, very well-known product. And uh, they do exceptional work. And we are very, very excited to work with them. But, like I said, we do have to get ready. So we're going to throw some things in the truck. I'm going to pack an overnight bag. And we're going to take the Yuka Pack Camper on a road trip to Saskatchewan to meet with our new manufacturers. And I'm gonna take you guys along with me because that's pretty much what this YouTube channel is basically turning into. All right guys, we are on the road. We are taking Highway 12 uh, east, right out of Lacombe. We're only gonna make a few turns on this road while we go. So it's virtually straight there. It's gonna be Saskatchewan and Alberta. It's gonna be the Alberta Plains into the Saskatchewan Plains. been hearing some clattering from my timing chain and I've noticed it's getting progressively worse the worst thing you could have fail on a trip is having your timing chain jump or slack or anything like that because then the timing out of your engine immediately changes and you can catastrophically damage your your engine so there's no other choice we're gonna keep paying attention to it, but it does make this drive a little bit more hairy. Quick here on the phone, just what I'm talking about when I say I can monitor my camper from the road. So I have a file that says Yuka Pack on it. And in that file is everything that connects 
uh, to my phone via Bluetooth. So I've got my Discover Blue lithium battery, which is a Wi-Fi char Wi-Fi battery, my Victron Connect, and my car fridge freezer. So when I hit on that Victron Connect, it'll kind of pop open. And as long as my Bluetooth is on, we're gonna hit allow. We might have to crawl into the back of the camper and just make sure that um, that charge controller is in fact taking a charge. We've been getting a ton of sun but I want to get as much of that as I can possibly get. So we're just going to grab some cleaning supplies real quick. This and... Do I have a rag rag? I should have a rag rag. Yes, I do. This will work. Now we're actually in a really cool spot for me personally as well. We're just outside of the village of Forestburg at the highway connection of the Eastern Alberta transmission line. Now, if you don't know what the EATL is, you probably shouldn't because it's not that important, but it is a part of my personal work history because I helped install it. This whole pipe, this whole power line that snakes up from there and comes along all the way down there it just keeps going for miles and miles and miles. Uh, that was one of the largest projects I think I was ever part of. And we were responsible for putting these in. So we would actually come in and get all these pads ready for every single one of these transmission towers and uh, get them ready so that when the linesmen come, they can just take their helicopters, pick up that line and just move from tower to tower to tower to tower making all the connections. One of the biggest transmission line projects in Alberta's history, it is absolutely enormous. And it was actually uh, <clears throat> the catalyst for what kind of got me uh, into the pickup truck. I was running Jeeps for a long time and I ended up buying a Nissan Titan and uh, just fell in love with the truck, used it for work for quite a few years. And uh, ended up working with a guy by the name of Lee McCarty. And Lee is kind of a cool guy because he started a uh, four by four group uh, years ago. And it was actually the first crew that I actually went out wheeling. It was actually Lee and Colby McCarty that are responsible for bringing me or, or in introducing me into the four by four hobby in 2006, 2007, maybe, uh, maybe even 2008. Um, so we ended up working together, great set of guys. They ended up starting a four by four company called Spitfire Off-Road out of Pinoca. I'm not sure what ended up with it, but uh, still in contact with them a little bit today and uh, super cool. So it's a really fun little, really fun piece of Dave history here. And uh, I was actually, for the for the job, I was staying in a cabin just, just south of here as well, which we passed on the way up. And then we would actually meet up in Forestburg, which is just ahead of us and do all of our pre-trips. So. so right now we're pulling in about 40 watts. We're sitting at uh, 1.9 amps per hour. So before we pulled over, we were sitting at like 30, maybe 28, 27 watts on here. And just from cleaning that panel, um, we've got another 15, 20 watts in direct sunlight. So that's really, really good. guys we made it we are literally on the alberta saskatchewan border but i also hear 
an insane amount of geese on the back side of that ridge there. So I'm assuming they're all gaggled there right now because it's fall and they're all going to be starting to make their ways south for the winter. One of Canada's biggest migratory birds gearing up for the big the uh, the big push. I also see a lot of cow hoof prints around here, and cow patties. So safe to say this is probably a grazing area. Pretty confident that it's public land. We're not going to be taking any risks. I'm going to make dead sure that it is. So go for a walk, make sure we don't see any private property signs or anything like that, and we should be good to go. Very cool spot. Here's the truck. Right over there. Just walking along the ground here and I'm noticing some mushrooms. Pulled one out here just so you guys can kind of take a look here. So this is a, what they would call a fairy ring mushroom. And we know that from the stem, the furling underneath, and the style of cap. Now I'm not sure if these guys are in fact edible, so I'm not gonna pick any to eat. But that right there, is your uh, fairy ring mushroom. And they are very, very common around these parts. You're gonna see them absolutely everywhere. And I do now see a fence line that's gonna stop us from getting to the other side of the... But it is just loaded full of geese. Look at that. Those are all geese. Every single one of them. Oh. See, we've made it to the other side of this gate. Well, it's a good thing we didn't end up camping there because technically we are currently trespassing. That is not good. Let's get out of here. I find it really difficult to participate in a lot of the group right. trips that I'm invited to. I get invited to so many awesome trail trips, but with work being as it is, I don't always have the opportunity to go. So when I have an opportunity to work in some recreation on a work trip, I really try to do so. And that's why I really wanted to try to find a place with fish. All right, so it is uh, 6.54 at the moment. And uh, sunset, according to my Garmin, is in 25 minutes. And we're about 18 minutes from camp. And we're, we've switched up camp and we're now going to be at Scott Reservoir. Which is good because we're an hour closer to our destination. So even if we only get about an hour of fishing tonight, we'll get at least an hour in the morning. So long as we get up on time. So I think that's what we're going to do. We're still going to have decent light at least for a few minutes when we get there. We'll set up camp when we're ready to set up camp. But what we'll do is we'll just go, we'll fish. It looks like there's trout, pike, and walleye at the reservoir. And uh, it, it's also harvest season right now. So anybody that's going to be anywhere are going to be on the fields. And they're going to be on the fields tonight until God knows when. You can already see that a lot of these farms have already got most of the stuff they need off there. Which is good. That means things are browning quickly and well here in Saskatchewan. And Saskatchewan is our... It's the, it's the biggest food producer in the country for us. So it's good to see stuff's getting off the fields. We'll see you guys when we pull up to camp. And uh, as long as it's a nice spot and there's nobody there, we'll consider it there. I don't sleep in Walmart parking lots, especially with the rig that I have. It's not a stealth camp rig at all. So seclusion. I don't know if that's the the biggest fish I've ever caught or the smallest fish I've ever caught, but technically that is a fish hooked. Wonder if that's good for bait. I'm gonna keep that on there. Oh, right there. All right, guys. As you can see, 
we lost all light and we caught no fish. I am tired. We are the only ones here now, but as you can see, the sun is setting. Like, it's just beautiful. You know, like, look at that. Like, that's beautiful. Um, so yeah, that's, that's kind of what we're gonna do. We're gonna pop the top, set up camp, and uh, go from there. trying to eat a little healthier right now so for supper we're having some sandwiches some cottage cheese with some cherry tomatoes I'm gonna finish my supper and listen to some music. And then when it's time to settle in for the night, we'll pour ourselves a whiskey and we'll see you guys inside. What is this? All the way. Hey, well, you know what? We'll leave that side open because that side is on the river side. So if anybody does come up, we'll be good to go. Nope. And then. Oh yeah, I, you know, I don't know if I've ever shown this guys appropriately. Um, this is our pantry. This is the same pantry that you can access when this uh, fart system gets pulled all the way out. And that's our, uh, that's our whole camper there. You can kind of see me standing around, walking around. Pretty freaking nifty, bud. But we want our Pendletons out of there is what we want. So yeah, so this is, this is the camper. So this is how you step up into it. Just sitting up here. Man, I love these things. I get away with keeping all my bedding up here. I keep my body pillow up here and a double thick, uh, dual double size sleeping bag. Yeah, and then in here, you got your cabinet storage. And right now it's just carrying the battery and my, uh, collapsible table and then beside us over here we've got our camping goods so we've got a, a gas burner stove in here so we can do coffee inside before we have to get out we've got some organizational stuff in here some bug spray what else we got in here some electrical tape some heating pads we got some books over there and then this is also motion light so as soon as you stick your hand in there you kind of kind of see what you're working with there and then right down here, this is my shelf table. When you come down here and you want a little bit of working space there, you just take this off, hooks it from, hook it from the mole panels, which should be on right now. There we go. Hook it into the mole panels and away you go. But yeah, that's a, that's a Yucca Pack camper in a Nissan Frontier. Uh, short box too, so it is small, but it is awesome for me. I absolutely love it. Now here's the deal guys uh, We've been running you can pack campers now for four years So what happens is, is as we order a camper it has to go to one vendor to cut and form it has to go to another vendor for uh, welding then it can come to me for uh, Assembly then it, has go, then it has to go to another vendor for powder coating and then back to me for final assembly We have to control the means of production from beginning to end now there's only two ways to accomplish this. Spend close to a million dollars on equipment and then close to a million dollars on the labor per year to run that, <clears throat> putting us $2 million in the hole. Or we find a manufacturer that can manufacture campers um, in Canada at a rate that makes sense for us to, to have them made for us. And so that's what tomorrow's gonna be all about. Tomorrow we're gonna go meet a manufacturer who's been manufacturing expedition equipment now for quite some time. We're, that's what we're that's why we're in Saskatchewan 
uh, and we're gonna go see what they're all about. We're gonna give them our design files, and uh, this is gonna be the next chapter of Blind Man Overland, the company. I'm gonna pour ourselves a drink. We're gonna sleep well. Today. See you guys in the morning.